Hi, I'm Dr. Mike Milligan. I'm here with Dr. David Wong, trained at the University of British Columbia Dental School in, in Canada, mm -hmm. Vancouver. Spent 21 years doing research at Harvard, mm -hmm. and now the University of California, Los Angeles, doing research on salivary diagnostics, a very interesting, wonderful coming field for our patients. David, thanks so much for being with us. Good to be here. Good to be here. Tell us a little bit about what you're doing with salivary diagnostics, what that is in a nutshell, and then what that's going to do for our patients, because I'm really excited about it. Good. So um, this, this journey of salivary diagnostic, the part that we were involved with, started 12 years ago. Right. And when I moved from Massachusetts to California, and at that time, the National Institute of Health, one of the 27th Institute at the NIH, the National Institute of Dental and Craniofacial Research, mm -hmm. invested in the academic community to do one thing. Mm -hmm. And that one thing is to turn saliva into a clinical reality. Fabulous. And they did it in two parts. First is to identify what I call the first diagnostic alphabet in saliva. Because mm -hmm. prior to that time, we really don't know what's in saliva, right. except there's something there. And the proteum is what the NIH decided to invest in. Secondly is they also invested in developing technology, point of care technology, that could eventually allow clinicians and patients to take a drop of saliva and monitor these disease discriminatory information. Mm -hmm. So with that combination, the vision of the NIDCR is the day when a dentist, a doctor, a nurse, or a patient can take a drop of their own saliva and monitor their health, right. or is there an onset of a disease, whether right. it's periodontal disease, oral cancer, diabetes, or, or, or life-threatening conditions. Right. So, so the, the, the overarching goal here is, 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 that the, you know, is to turn saliva into a clinical reality that, that affords this non-invasive means of monitoring health and diseases. The holy grail of diagnostic is non-invasiveness. Sure. There's no other body, you know, you know, component better than the saliva to fulfill that. Well, what's exciting to me is I, I get a quarterly blood test, mm -hmm. blood and urine test, because I'm a patient at the mm -hmm. heart, uh, heart Attack and sure. Prevention Center. Mm -hmm. Don't want one. That's what my father and uncles died mm -hmm. from. So I get, a, I get a, a, a blood test. They take about seven or eight tubes of blood every, mm -hmm. every quarter. Mm -hmm. Well, if I could do this just by using my saliva instead mm -hmm. of the blood, mm -hmm. uh, urine, or even... For some diseases, we look at spinal taps sure. and, and things like that. How much less invasive and easier and more comfortable it is mm -hmm. if you can just do that with saliva? And that's mm -hmm. what you're talking about. Uh, in, indeed. Now, I'm, 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 not, I'm not here to... Not for everything, but, but for some right. things. I'm not advocating replacement of a blood. Blood is great. Blood chemistry is there to stay. Yep. There's no question. Yep. But there are areas that we, we now know that shall, saliva shines. Right. And well, that's, that's, sure. that's on the detection of diseases, especially mm -hmm. cancer, early detection of cancer, which is, which is really the key to, okay. to, to, to outcome and, 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 and survival and, and, and morbidity. Okay. Mm -hmm. so, so at this time, we're looking at, at certain types of cancers. Mm -hmm. Any in particular? So in my lab, per se, right. we are embarking on a number of cancer that are non-oral. Obviously, we're working on oral cancer. Right. But systemically, we're working on lung cancer, breast, gastric cancer, stomach cancer, as well as ovarian cancer. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, did I see pancreatic cancer? Yes, as one indeed. Of them as well? Indeed. Okay. We okay. focus on these notoriously difficult lack of early detection cancer, okay. and and to really ask the question: Are there molecular constituents in saliva of these patients mm -hmm. that could detect this disease? before clinical manifestation of symptoms. Now, this isn't a reality yet. About how long are we looking at before, before this is going to be a viable, credible uh, procedure, diagnostic so, procedure? So there, there's a timeline to this. It depends on each of these disease we're working on and other people working on it as well. Right. Oral cancer should be about within two years from clinical reality. That I mean from regulatory approval 
and then being either through a commercial laboratory or a point of care you know, you know, evaluation for risk right. assessment. Right. Systemic disease wise, my timeline is about five years okay. for gastric cancer and perhaps also five years for Sjogren. There's dry mouth conditions that right. many of our, con our patients suffer from, primarily women. Right. Mm -hmm. right. Right, wonderful. So simple saliva test. Mm -hmm. What does the test look like? What are you What are you doing? You just taking a swab? You having a swish and spit with a solution? What What, what are you doing? So basically, that you know, is collecting a saliva sample either in a you know dentist's office or mm -hmm. eventually at home, and then that sample could be evaluated. You know, either using a point of care you know capability, which we develop and others right. as well, right. or send it into a reference lab. You know, okay. LabCorp or Quest Diagnostic or others. Sure, mm -hmm. sure. Okay. Uh, once we've done this with cancer, several different types of mm -hmm. cancers, not all cancers, mm -hmm. but, but the, the ones that you mentioned probably, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, then where do we go with it? What, what do you see the future after right. that with salivary diagnostics? So the most important element that we need to be cognizant of is scientifically credential. Right. saliva markers for disease detection, mm -hmm. especially for systemic diseases, because that bar is so much higher and those opportunities are so much broader mm -hmm. should they become a clinical reality. And once that is credential, I think, you know, the, the list is, is yeah, endless. It opens the floodgates to, to look further. In addition to, to detecting diseases, the, the flip side of it, the other side of it, is monitoring health. Sure. And what better you know, you know, you know, capability to have a non-invasive biofluid that you and I produce a liter to a liter and a half a day. That's three bottle water a day, right, right. constantly coming to oral cavity, right. non-invasively, non-painfully, and non-embarrassingly mm -hmm. that we can monitor. Right. Monitoring personalized health is a reality now. Right. The eye watch is six months away. The so iWatch. the iWatch is something that you can talk into and monitor right. your health. Right. And these wearable gear, the monitoring your health, is, is, is coming very well, quickly. Wellness is certainly the key. Indeed. That's the, we need to go from the treatment Indeed. model, uh, once you get disease, treating it, to preventing it. And, and early detection also. A and it sounds to me like the, the, the salivary diagnostics, you can certainly detect earlier. Uh, by, by by using this indeed and and th therefore treat earlier and less invasively w with less problems indeed that's a holy grail of diagnostic it's okay. it's non-invasiveness early detection and as a profession we're blessed by this capability but now we have that opportunity to scientifically credential it right by credentialing it you mean verifying it uh, doing do, doing the research you're doing over the next few years to, to absolutely verify that this is credible and uh, a, and a valid diagnostic test is is that correct? Indeed, okay. In, it, to take these markers and and advance it towards regulatory approval, right. nothing short of regulatory approval and then scientifically credentialing it that that how a distal organ like the pancreas that you mentioned, right. when this disease can shuttle information through our vasculature, reach our salivary gland and come into saliva, right. that that reflects the distal disease. You mean the mouth really is connected to the rest of the body? No question, no <laughs> question, absolutely. Obviously it is, yeah. So is there any last things you'd like to tell us, Dr. Wong, before we close? Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm very glad to be here. Um, I, think, I think this organization is, 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 just, is just amazing, it is advocacy, and, and I'm very privileged to be engaged in, in the research that we, we do. If what we do, I think, I think clearly, in, in, you know, you know, I, I, you know, you know, you know, sub echoes that 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 sort of mission mm -hmm. of of the AOSH that mm -hmm. there the the oral systemic connectivity, right. whether the pancreas is connecting to the salivary gland, whether it's AT and T, Sprint, or Verizon, we can't see it, but it doesn't mean they don't connect. Oh, so we absolutely. have that opportunity to credential it, and once we can do that then I think it really would put our profession dentistry, you know, at, you know, at par with a medical profession. The day can even come that dentistry through this, this risk assessment of systemic disease could put us at the, at the front line of primary health care. That's, oh, that's a day to look forward to. Absolutely it is. How, how can we follow what you're doing? Where do we get information as you progress through? 
So uh, you know, us and others uh, are, are engaging in this. Um, you is know, my website? yeah, my, my lab is. You, you can you can just look us up at David Wong UCLA Saliva. You 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 you'll find us there, and we have a very very nicely assembled website that's very illustrative of what we do, where we came from, and what we look forward to. Wonderful, David. Thank you so much. So glad to be here. Great. Really, thank you very much.